we have tended to assume in this discussion that if there was a Chinese move, that the, the United States would be there. But uh, people in Taiwan are asking themselves the question, is that actually the case? Would America be willing to risk a, a confrontation with China that could escalate into attacks on America, uh, on the Chinese mainland, for the sake of Taiwan? If America does not do anything, it would be the beginning of the end of the US-led alliance in the system. And if you spend any time in Washington at all, you will realize that that is not acceptable to the Americans. If you look at the last 100 years of history, America does sacrifice blood and treasure in a big way to achieve its strategic aims. So I would say almost with certainty, the US will come to Taiwan's defense. John Lee is right. If the US doesn't react, then it loses all strategic credibility in the region. And the broad risk of the US losing strategic credibility in the region would be horrendous. For Australia, we would be on our own. As well as increasingly aggressive international moves, like expanding China's huge navy into the Pacific, President Xi Jinping has been cracking down hard on his own people to bring them into line with Communist Party thinking. Xi calls it rectification, and he's banned everything from boy bands and reality TV shows to foreign computer games and apps. China's private schools have been all but decimated by new regulations. And lessons on what's called Xi Jinping thought are now compulsory in primary schools. It's as if it's a population being readied for trouble. So if it came to war, how would it actually play out? We have to be able to sink the PLA Navy the largest navy in the world today. We have to put it under the water, down to Davy Jones's locker. We have to sink that fleet. Former Director of Intelligence and Information Operations for the US Pacific Fleet, Captain James E. Fennell, has wargamed an invasion of Taiwan and says China would use a tactic learned from the US military operation Desert Storm during the first Gulf War. the strategy called shock and awe. We know from Chinese writings that they've studied Desert Storm. The Chinese have thousands and thousands of ballistic missiles that are arrayed along the Chinese East Coast. And those rockets and those ballistic missiles would be targeting Taiwan's key nodes, military centers, their ports, their airfields known garrison locations of Taiwan army forces. And I think there's no question in my mind that China, once they make the decision to do this, they will come full full bore like a, like a, a crazy man with an ax. The skies over Baghdad have been illuminated. In the first Gulf War, the United States bombed Iraq for 42 days and 42 nights consecutively in order to achieve its objectives. There is nothing that's stopping China from doing that, and there is very little the United States can do to affect it, except at very, very great cost. Both sides know how this is going to play out. The only question is, who's got the most will? Malcolm, in terms of firepower, though, China has some very impressive weaponry. Yeah, they're developing this very long-range strike capability that is designed to be able to strike at the US and its allies. One of the systems they're developing is the DF-26, which is an intermediate range ballistic missile that can strike at US carriers as far out as Guam. If they can sink aircraft carriers, that's a huge loss of life. Each aircraft carrier has about 5,000 personnel on board. So the potential for the Chinese to impose huge cost on the US and its allies, including Australia, is very real. Yes, China's President Xi Jinping ensures his country's military might is there for his people and the world to see. 
and adding to his war footing off the coast in disputed territory, China has built artificial islands loaded with defensive hardware.